It happens only twice a year, the Springfield Mile. Racers from all across the country coming to the capital to show off their stuff. The Springfield Mile has been going on since the 1930s. In the pro twin qualifier, Brandon Wilhelm crosses first. He had a best time of 37.06. In the GNC twin semis, Johnny Lewis comes in first. He qualifies for that main stage. Then in the second heat, Briar Barman comes in first with Dustin Crow from Peoria came in second. In the dash for cash, Brian Smith would get a little extra money in his pocket. He would come in first and he would go on to win the Springfield Mile. Dustin Crow, he finishes in 12th place. The fans are great here in Springfield. Um, the promoters, the IMDA, just do a great job prepping the track, promoting the race. Um, there's always a good crowd. As long as the weather holds out here in May in Illinois, it's usually a heck of a show for everybody to watch. The track's fun to ride for the racers, and uh, it's just good all around. Definitely when you're back at Springfield, it's fun. And I'm not known as the mile type of racing guy, so uh, there's no home field advantage. Uh, this is only like my sixth or seventh time riding this place, and uh, a lot of these other guys got you know, they got hundreds and hundreds of more laps on them than me. And congratulations to all the racers. Now let's move over to some high school sports. The postseason is getting closer to the end. And now it's time for super sectional for Class 1A schools. For Rochester, this looks all too familiar. This time last year, the Rockets made it to the super sectionals but fell to Marquette 1-0 in the second OT. This year, Rochester will face Marquette again. And the Rockets are looking for a little redemption. The last time these two teams faced off, it was earlier this season, and Rochester won in a shootout 5-4. to four. I hope we're trying to rewrite something new. You know, it's, at the beginning of the year, we always talk about, you know, hey, this is a new team. You know, every, everything we're doing, you can't look at last year. You can't look at the things you've done in the past. You can't rely on that. You know, you can't look at the history of the program. You have to look at this year. You have to look at yourself. You know, all these teams, they don't care what we've done in the past. You know, that's that's nothing to them. So that's why we always try to we always try to stress, you know, this, this year's got to have its own identity. And I think we've really gotten that. I think as the season's gone on, uh, I think we've seen girls step up, and I really think we've seen some. Uh, uh, we've, we've seen this team kind of develop its own identity. The Rockets will be in action this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Let's switch lanes a little bit and hit the track. Class 1A and 2A boys sectional track meets completed this past week, and now runners are looking ahead to states. Devontae Clark will be heading to state. He came in first in the 200 and 400 meter dash in the southeast sectional. Also, Michael Giovanni from Glenwood will also be making the trip to Charleston. He anchored the 4 by 400 relay, both wanting to bring home some hardware. I'm ready. I've been going to state since my sophomore year, so I know the feeling. I'm accustomed to the feeling. And my, uh, my best friends, Reggie and James, they, they've been telling me while they're at college all season, go back to Charleston, show them what we're about, show them we're not done. So that's what I plan on doing. It's great that we had the teams that we had qualified today qualify and with. I don't know, track, just making it to state is huge for our team. And with our, without our 4x2, a lot of our 4x4 runners will have more energy to do better. And we're definitely pushing to try to win state in the 4x4. State track finals will begin this Thursday and go through this Saturday at EIU.